while the mystery behind Donald Trump's love fest with Russian leader Vladimir Putin may be unfolding before our very eyes as new information about Trump's extensive ties to Russia are being brought to light. Yesterday, while hosting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Trump lashed out at the intelligence leaks and the media for reporting those leaks, calling the press once again fake news. But he also said they were leaking classified information, which actually means the information was correct. He then praised his former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, the man he fired, and blamed his departure on the media. Michael Flynn, General Flynn, is a wonderful man. I think he's been treated very, very unfairly by the media, um, as I call it, the fake media in many cases. And uh, I think it's really a sad thing that he was treated so badly. I think in addition to that, uh, from intelligence, uh, papers are being leaked, things are being leaked. It's criminal action, criminal act. And it's been going on for a long time, before me. But now it's really going on. And people are trying to cover up for a terrible loss that the Democrats had under Hillary Clinton. All right, folks, there's a lot of things wrong with that particular statement. But let's just deal with his description of the man he fired Monday night. A wonderful man who was mistreated by the media. Okay. Trump, you fired him, or did he resign? Well, that's what Sean Spicer said. Check this out. The president was very concerned that General Flynn had misled the vice president and others. He was also very concerned in light of sensitive subjects dealt with by that position of national security advisors like China, North Korea, and the Middle East, that the president must have complete and unwavering trust for the person in that position. The evolving and eroding level of trust as a result of this situation and a series of other questionable instances is what led the president to ask for General Flynn's resignation. Mm, that sounds a lot different than what Trump said. In the meantime, a group of bipartisan members of the House yesterday introduced legislation to prevent Trump from lifting sanctions on Russia. The bill would require the president to alert Congress if he intends to remove them and gives them 120 days to rule on his request. Of course not. Why would there be any contacts between the campaign? Uh, Chris, the, the, th this is all a distraction and it's all a part of a narrative to delegitimize uh, the election and, and, and to question the legitimacy of this presidency. Oh. The American people see right through it. I'm dismayed that such a step is even necessary. These sanctions enjoyed bipartisan support when they were put in place by President Obama, and lifting them without a clear change in Russia's behavior would be nothing more than an appeasement of Putin's destabilizing agenda. Not only has Russian behavior not changed, it has intensified. I think the recent revelation of uh, Flynn's secret conversation with the Russian ambassador on the subject of sanctions makes this legislation all the more important. Folks, what in the world is going on? Joining us right now via phone, Malcolm Nance, a counterterrorism intelligence advisor and author of the book, The Plot to Hack America, How Putin's Cyber Spies in WikiLeaks Tried to Elect an American President. Uh, also joining us from our D.C. studio is our panel, Ralph Chittums. Ralph Chittums, Pres principal of Black Elephant Consultants, Amber J. Phillips, co-director of Black, Jim Wallace, author of America's Original Sin, Racism, White Privilege, and the Bridge to a New America, and Yolanda Young, columnist and attorney of law, attorney and lawyers of color. Malcolm, I want to start with you. Um, it's amazing. So Trump blames the media. Then he tweets his fake news. But then he says the leaks were classified information. Uh, it is clear the intelligence community cannot trust this president or anybody around him with it, any information dealing with Russia. Well, it's, it's very strange. I mean, yesterday and his, his statements were just overwhelming. I mean, which one is it? Was Michael Flynn fired because he lied to the vice president? Uh, or was Michael Flynn following orders? and then got caught out by the news media. And those are the only two choices that, that Trump gives us. There's no in-between here. Uh, most likely it was the latter, that Michael Flynn was acting on the orders of President Trump, 
Uh, Mike Pence would have known this has been a policy proposal, you know, lifting sanctions against Russia and probably getting Mike Flynn to calm Russia down while President Obama, Obama was kicking out 35 Russian spies and retaliating for a massive cyber warfare attack on the American electoral process. So by actually coming and saying Mike Flynn was a great guy and uh, uh, was a great guy and was badly mistreated by the press leads me to believe the you know that it the that the fact that Mike Flynn was acting under orders. I, I don't know what what he's going to say today. Well, and again, he gives all of these conflicting answers, uh, and is and is is absolutely confusing. Uh, and what's also interesting to me is that uh, that you have Republicans in the House and the Senate who don't want any level of investigation. I think they are afraid, as somebody uh, who is an expert in this area, uh, just just how do you assess this unwillingness to turn a blind eye to when you have just tremendous smoke? Right. Well, you know, we're at a point now where a decision is going to have to be made by every American, not just the, the House and the Senate Republicans. The question is, do they stand uh, with the, the United States? Do they stand as patriots? In a situation where now we're learning from the New York Times, and I predicted in my book about six months ago that there were four people in the administration, in the Trump campaign, who may have been in continuous contact with Russian intelligence officers. Now, we may be heading towards Benedict Arnold territory here. And I doubt, considering uh, the obsequiousness, that slavish devotion that Donald Trump seems to show to Vladimir Putin, that these people were not acting on behalf of him or in coordination with him. They may have seen it just as a case of, of overwhelming arrogance to where they were co co coordinating with regards to the hacking and the release of information for WikiLeaks. They may not even have known that these individuals were Russian intelligence officers. But the point is, they, everything they do, everything Donald Trump says, pushes us to a question of whether you stand with Russia or you stand with America. And again, this is going to be a matter of patriotism. But we'll see whether the Republicans with, can withstand the accusations that, uh, you know, they're going to support Trump in his uh, in his. Um, uh, again, slavish devotion to the Kremlin uh, at risk to the national security of the United States. Malcolm Nance, we surely appreciate it, man. Thank you so very much for joining us. My pleasure. All right, Ralph, I want to start with you. Not surprised. Dude, what, what, the, what, the, what the heck is up uh, with your party? Uh, I, mean, I mean, my goodness, uh, Donald Trump keeps giving all his different answers, contradicting his press secretary, contradicting others. What's going on? Well, there's clearly a, a lack of communication going on inside the administration, but if you look at what's going on, what clearly happened is Mike Flynn operated outside of protocol. What he did was not illegal, unethical, or immoral. He operated outside of protocol, and when he was asked a flat-out question, he did the one thing that you do not do, especially if you're in national security. You do not lie to the president, and you do not lie to the vice president. And he should have been terminated based upon that lie. Now, the rest of it, slavery's devotion to Kremlin, see, this is all partisan politics and witch hunts. Nobody said anything when President Obama said to Medvedev into a hot mic that he thought was off, wait until after after the election and I have more um, flexibility regarding the deployment of NATO missiles and sanctions on Hold Russia. Up, Ralph, so this Ralph, is just Ralph, 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 it's Ralph, a witch Ralph, 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 Flynn was Ralph, fired, I want you, end of discussion. Ralph, Ralph, nice try, nice try, not end of discussion. Donald Trump during the campaign said he was not friends with Putin. He gave other interviews, he said he was friends with Putin. Donald Trump said he had no business dealings with Russia. His own son at a conference said millions of dollars from Russia were flowing into the Trump organization. And Mike Pence, Sean Spicer, and others have said there was no contact between any Trump campaign officials and officials in Russia during the campaign. Now we know that is also a lie. Now, I'm sorry, Ralph, which lie are we supposed to believe? Are we supposed to believe that there was no relationship with Russia or there was one? There were contacts, there were, one, there were not contacts. Which lie are we supposed to believe right now? Okay, which question do you want me to answer? Because you threw about 10 of them out there. 
No, right, because, they, and precisely, because that is a level of confusion that Donald Trump has given to the American people. He won't release his taxes. He won't release how much debt he owes. He said out of his own mouth that I have no relationship with Putin. I don't know the guy. But another interview, oh, yes, I have a relationship with him. Yes, we're friends. Which one is it? He said, I have no business dealings in Russia. His own son says millions from Russia are flowing into our organization. Ralph, take a pick. Which why are we supposed to believe? Um, well, honestly, you can believe whatever it is you want to believe, but the fact no, is, which Mike, lie going, are back we supposed to what, believe? going back to the subject that you started with, which was Mike Flynn. Mike Flynn lied. Mike Flynn was terminated because he well, lied to the president and to the vice president. That was well, the question you question. started with. Were, I answered were, that question. Well, let me ask you a question. Were we told there was no contact between officials with the Trump campaign and Russia? Were we told that by Trump during the campaign? Were we told that by Mike Spence? Were we told that by Sean Spicer? Yes or no? They were made, that statement was made, yes. Now, 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 hold up. That statement was made. Now we have irrefutable evidence coming from intelligence officials, FBI's investigating, that there were indeed contacts between Trump campaign officials and Russian officials. So, who's lying? If you, if you read the articles, they said that the people in the Trump organization may not have even known that the individuals with whom they were speaking were members of the intelligence community. No, That's no, 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 I, no, 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 I, I said Russian officials, they knew they were talking to Russians, Yolanda Young. Listen, this is the most important thing that we need to note. Ralph is wrong when he says that what Flynn did wasn't illegal. The fact is, the intelligence community is still gathering information. We do not know. And we do not know where this trail ends. But if you look at the pattern of President Donald Trump, we have a good reason to suspect that we indeed may be looking at a situation that involves treason. Amber, Amber Phillips, uh, you have Speaker Paul Ryan who says we shouldn't jump to conclusions until all the facts are in, but he doesn't want an investigation. Uh, isn't that how you get all the facts? <laughs> exactly. And I feel like folks like Maxine Waters has been really great at highlighting that there's smoke. And wherever there's smoke, there will soon be fire. Our election was riddled with influence by Russia. We now have someone who is leaving the administration for doing what everyone in the administration is guilty of, which is having conversations with Russia. So my hope is now that Mike Flynn has been excused, that somehow, some way, we will start to do the work that the American people want, which is to do a deep dive into what is going on with our democracy. We have the right to know. We have the right for people to stop lying on behalf of the president, and we need the president to stop lying before it's too late. We're in a moment where the fire is about to go, and right now we need, the American people deserve an investigation. We're not saying that anyone is accused of anything just yet, right. but can we please do our work and investigate what is happening here? But Jim Wallace, what you have is you have Republicans who are scared to death to investigate Trump. They're afraid he is going to tweet about him. But now you even have uh, Senator Chuck Grassley and Senator Dianne Feinstein wanting to see copies of those intercepts that, that, that intelligence gathered with Michael Flynn in these phone calls to see exactly what was said. Well, as Malcolm then said, it's hard to believe that Michael Flynn was acting alone, was just calling out to Russian officials on his own. It's hard to believe that. Uh, two, we now have confirmation that the Russian government was trying to influence an election in the United States on behalf of Donald Trump. And now we have confirmation that Trump officials were talking to Russian officials during the campaign. Now this is a pretty alarming thing. And what's really being raised here is whether Donald Trump is fit for office. Uh, this is where intellectually and morally where the President of the United States is fit for office. That's the hard question that we have to ask now. And whether the system is resilient enough to stand up to a president who is involved like this 
with a foreign government that was actively trying to influence our election. We'll see if the Republicans right. are willing to stand up to their president. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.